Live from Television City in Hollywood. Playhouse 90. Tonight, starring in alphabetical order, Ethel Barrymore, Hans Conrad, Conrad Hilton, Louis Jordan, Mildred Natwick, Slapsy Maxie Rosenblum, Charlie Ruggles, Kay Thompson, Monty Woolley, Lenny Hayton, and introducing Evelyn Rudy as Eloise. Playhouse 90, brought to you by Ronson, makers of the world's greatest pocket and table lighters, and electric shavers for men and women, and Ronson all lighter fuel in the switch spout can. And by Singer, designer and maker of the world's most advanced sewing machines. Singer, known the world over by these friendly signs, the famous Singer and Red S trademarks. On Playhouse 90, to introduce tonight's show, Miss June Lockhart. Good evening. Tonight, Playhouse 90 presents Kay Thompson's gay and delightful bestseller, Eloise, adapted by Leonard Spiegelgast. Eloise is six years old and lives at the Plaza Hotel in New York. She likes waiters, dogs who look like cats, movie stars, television, and turtles. And now, Eloise. It is the middle of the night, and except for a few late arrivals in the lobby, the only activity is putting the Plaza to bed. On the top floor where Eloise lives, all the guests are sound asleep. Directed by John Frankenheimer. Produced by Martin Manulis. Across 
side tables go off of the floor and the chairs go up, up. Now, Eloise, you know the Persian room isn't open this late. Tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll give you the bell cap. Bell captain speaking. Hi, Eloise. What you doing? Oh, looking at TV. What's on? Oh, I like that picture. Well, here's the thing of it. I'll go to Rubens for you. What do you want? One meringue glacé, two chicken bones. Hello? A lettuce leaf and a clam. Thank you very much, Melvin, and charge it, please. Listen here, you pigeon. You just better go away from there. I'm going to skunk you on your head. Should you be here? Of course. I am Eloise. I am six. I am a city child. I live at the plaza. <laughs> so do I. I have a dog who looks like a cat. His name is Weenie. Sometimes I put sunglasses on him. Do you really? I have a turtle. His name is Skipperty. He eats ravens and wears sneakers. Did you know that the plaza is the only hotel in New York that will allow you to have turtles? Oh, well, that's very understanding of them. Eloise, Eloise, Eloise. That's Nanny. She's my nurse. She's English and says everything three times. Like Eloise, you can't, can't, can't. Well, in your case, Eloise, that would appear to be a very good idea. Nanny says she would rather I didn't talk, talk, talk all the time. She wears tissue paper in her dress. You can hear it. She has eight hairpins made out of bones. She says that's all she needs in this life. Eloise, come right in off that ledge or we'll all freeze, freeze, freeze. I can't. I'm talking to my friends. Well, Eloise, I'm very glad to have met you. I hope perhaps we'll see each other again soon sometime. Well, I don't know whether we will or not. Because actually, I have an enormous amount of things to do every day. Besides, I'm quite busy so you can see. Proving that you should need a lot of rest. And so do I. So perhaps we should both go to bed. Hmm? Good night, Eloise. Eloise! Yes, ma'am. <sighs> Louise, you'll be the absolute ruin of me. Now, please, 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 march directly to the bathroom. Hip, two, three, four. Hip, two, three, four. Hip, two, three, four. Put on your robe and make it jolly quick. Walk to the bathroom, wash your face, your hands, your ears, and every place. 
As we said many times before, don't, don't, don't leave the soap on the bathroom floor. With a hey, nonny, nonny, and a, oh, here's Weenie. He's looking for you. He's yawning and rubbing his eyes. He's so exhausted. With a shoo, 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 and a rock and roll. Now, there you are, Weenie. And, oh, well, we... How can you possibly stand, Sabine? She has absolutely no face whatever. Comes of all that cross-country travelling. I never did hold with the Air Express. Did you ever hear of a manufacturer making a doll with two right legs? And here's poor, poor, poor sailor. Oh, there's practically nothing left but a torso. That's because she was Miss Moore's terrible accident. She beat it so hard she almost choked in the night. This ambulance came and took her to this hospital. Are you sure that actually happened, Eloise? I think it did. I think it was this emergency and they had to go all this terribly dark medicine. When she came back home, she was weak, weak, weak and had to take cod liver oil. Oh, your imagination is bigger than you are, Eloise. It's all very well to make things up, but sometimes we have to hang on to our corsets and look life squarely in the face. Now, with a hey, nonny, nonny, will you get yourself into bed? Actually, Nanny, I am rather tired. Tired, tired. There you go, and Sabine can be on this side. There. Good night, Eloise. Good night, Nanny. Good night, my dear. Good night. yet? No, not Mr. Devereaux, Mrs. Devereaux. Oh, be certain of that, operator. I want to speak to Mrs. Devereaux. Well, try it now. I'll hang on. <laughs> oh, Nanny here. Hello, Mrs. Devereaux. Oh, we're both fine. Eloise couldn't be happier. Yes, She's uninhibited and expressing herself freely. Oh. Oh, well, I do hope everything will be over soon and settled, for I'm having a hard time keeping it from Eloise. No, she hasn't the faintest notion you can count on me a thousand percent. My lips are sealed. She'll never get it out of me. I swear it on Oliver Cromwell. Wait a moment. Just a moment, please. You can depend on me, Mrs. Devereaux. I'll call you tomorrow night, after the fight. Nanny, this is the third night in succession I found this turtle in my bed. It's rather a compliment, Miss Thompson. He doesn't take to everyone. He's terribly fond of you. He's so warm-hearted and friendly. Yes, well, that may very well be, but he's a trifle clammy in bed. Oh, excuse me, please. Nanny here. Oh, hello, Mr. Devereaux. Yes, Eloise is very well. Couldn't be better. Yes, her tutor comes regularly. Yes, she washes her teeth at proper intervals. Yes, I've washed her hair. Yes, she's had her second shot vaccine. Anything else you'd like to know, Mr. Devereaux? I'm a thoroughly impartial observer, Mr. Devereaux. It is neither of my making nor Eloise's. It seems to me that you did it and you can settle it. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, now you know. I've tried so hard to let no one in the hotel know for fear that Eloise would find out. Find out what, Nanny? Oh, that her parents are having the most shattering domestic problem. And there's the most awful fight going on about who gets Eloise. Well, that's the Devereaux court battle. I've seen it in the papers. You mean Eloise is the Eloise they're fighting about? There's only one Eloise. Well, I shouldn't worry about her. She'll manage. She loves them both, so you know. Oh, naturally. Nanny, has she always lived at the plaza? Eloise was born in the plaza. People aren't born in the plaza. In sweet 11, 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Just like her mother before her. 
and her mother before her. And she's always lived in the plaza, except for that unfortunate two years in California. Why her mother ever married a man from the West Coast is beyond me. Seems to me that's the basis of the entire problem. East is East and West is West. But then you do know your Kipling notions. Boots, 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 pow, marching up and down again. Eloise is asleep. But such wood, she hasn't the faintest notion of what's going on and seems absolutely unaffected. Oh, that's so obvious, Skibbity. Nanny. I saw her this afternoon. She had two Skibbity. sticks. She was skittering them along all the doors. She had her roller skates, was slopping them against the woodwork and writing her name in lipstick on Skibbity. every conceivable wall. Oh, she's quite unaffected. You won't say anything to her. Oh, you can trust me completely. But please, please, please try to keep the turtle within bounds. Oh, I'll try, try, try. Oh, Skibbity. Skipper D. Okay. Really? I've just had the most extraordinary experience. I was just about to go to bed when I found this turtle. Well, Louis, it's rather a compliment. He doesn't take it to everybody, and he's really terribly fond of you. He's so warm-hearted and friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, do all the rooms in the hotel come equipped with them? Only those that Eloise can get in and out of. She has a pass key. Eloise. I've met her. She's a little girl. And quite a little girl. And now that you've met her, your whole life may take on a completely new perspective, and it may be very healthy. Right? I'm already aware of that. Our friend Eloise was standing on the balcony at 2 o'clock in the morning, sklunking pigeons. I caution you to close your transoms. She's been blackmailing me for weeks. <laughs> I don't approve you two lovebirds meeting in the public halls of the plaza. And I approve still less of a live turtle in my bed. <laughs> but that's only one of Eloise's turtles. And it's rather a compliment, Monty, because he doesn't take to everyone, and he's really terribly fond of you. He's so warm-hearted and friendly, isn't he, Kay? Yes. Good, Good night. night. I think I had your mother for lunch. Have you lost your ever-loving mind? That's what he said. My husband. The day I almost bought a sewing machine that wasn't a singer. Have you lost your ever-loving mind? You really mean you'd buy one of these sewing machines? An unknown, off-make, who ever heard of it? Kind of a thing like this. But, Charlie... Now, look. Of course I want a singer. Who doesn't? But we're trying to save them. These are so cheap, that's all. Cheap? Look, button nose, let me ask you something. What's cheap? Is it cheap if it doesn't stand up? If you maybe can't get parts for it, or repair, or you have to get it fixed every two weeks? Is that cheap? Now, you want the best sewing machine in the world, right? And since I'm paying for it, I do too. The best value. I don't want to get stuck. So you get yourself down to that Singer Sewing Center tomorrow. Oh, Charlie! Hey! Well, you know what happened. I got a singer. There are all kinds and all prices. Did you know that you can get a singer for less than a hundred dollars? And for only a few dollars a week with no red tape either. And that's not all. With a singer, you're so darn sure. You get the finest workmanship money can buy. The most advanced design in the world. Singer is years ahead. And whenever you need it, you can always get fast, dependable singer service from expert singer company personnel try and get service like that from anybody else. And Singer gives you a complete sewing course free. There are lots of things. And it's true, you know, a sewing machine is a lifetime buy. You really can't afford to take a chance. If you're in the market for a sewing machine, ask your husband. I'll bet you'll have a Singer. He knows those famous Singer and Red S trademarks are your guarantee of the best. Bonjour, bonjour, and a good morning to you, Joanna. And it is a good morning, Nanny. What is so rare is a day in June. Then if ever come perfect days, heaven tries the earth if it be in tune and over it's off to her warm yearlies. That's from the vision of Sir Longfellow. It's one of my favorite poems, poems, poems. 
And you and Eloise are my favorite guests in the whole Plaza Hotel. Oh, that's very really nice of you to say that, Joanna. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think you'd best start in Eloise's room first. Where is Eloise? Uh, she's ordering her breakfast. Oh. Whether we look, whether we listen, we hear life murmur and see it glisten. Hello, room service. Would you please send up room service? Hello, room service. Would you kindly send up one roast beef bowl, one raisin, and seven spoons to the top floor? And one oatmeal. You have to eat oatmeal or you'll dry up. Anybody knows that. One strawberry leaf and one clam in season. Thank you very much and charge it, please. I am absolutely so busy, I don't know how I can possibly get everything done. Ooh, I absolutely love room service. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning, Eloise. And what are we going to be today? Listen here, Joanna. We have what? to hurry and save the ranch. Otherwise, the rustlers will steal the horses. You better fall on the bed before all the shooting oh. starts. Now, Eloise, I have no time for games today. I have to be out there by two o'clock. I'll swipe you the pillow. You some sort of date with Philip? Certainly, I have no date to sit in. He hasn't asked me. I've only known him two weeks, Eloise, and he doesn't even know I'm alive. Unless you told him. I think I might have. Now, Eloise, Philip is your tutor. You should be doing your lessons with him, not discussing me. Why aren't you married, Joanna? Well, I suppose because nobody really wants to marry me. Well, I don't see why not. You have millions of social security. Did you know that we live next door to a movie star, Joanna? To the right? And that's Louis Jordan. My mother knows Cary Grant. Oh, she does. I think I'll go over there and tell Mr. Jolon you aren't married. No, Eloise, don't. Now, you stop it, Eloise. Oh, Mr. Jolon, you have any C-N-D-Y? Good morning, good morning. Oh, all right. This is a hold-up. We're not having this raid until this afternoon. Good. Would you like to meet a friend of mine whose name is Joanna? Joanna? Uh, who is she? Uh, one of your playmates? Joanna happens to be one of my very best friends. Once there was a child who had this friend who was so terribly lonely, so terribly beautiful. It was the most mysterious life. Did I ever happen to mention it? Uh, Eloise, what uh, precisely did you have in mind? Well, I thought perhaps if you weren't doing anything, you and Joanna could fall in love. Uh, Eloise, let's get something straight. I can't possibly help you out. I'm a married man. It would be quite useless for me to meet Joanna. Well, here's what I like to do. Pretend. Sometimes I'm a mother and have 40 children. Sometimes I'm a giant with fire coming out of my head. You see, here's the point of it. Why don't you pretend that you like Joanna? Then Philip will get furious. And get so mad that he'll steal Joanna away from you and he will kill you in a duel and you can go back to Hollywood. <laughs> now, Eloise, I have no intention of getting mixed up in any of your little plots. Okay, I'll introduce you to her. Joanna, you better come out here this very second, Joanna. Eloise, I have to call her. Joanna. Hello, Mr. Jordan. Uh, Eloise and I were just talking about you. Well, I'm terribly sorry. You should not have been disturbed. Oh, that's quite all right. Any friend of Eloise is a friend of mine. Thank you very much. Eloise is very forward, and I hope she did not say something she should. Of course not. She just seems to be concerned about helping you romantically. Well, I'm really very embarrassed. But there's no need for you to be embarrassed. I understand perfectly. You're an attractive girl, and Eloise is quite right. You should be in love. I know, Mr. Jordan, but it frightens me. That's one of the nice parts about being in love. See, it's a combination of excitement, fright, frustration, ecstasy. What am I doing? Standing out on the balcony at half past nine in the morning, talking about love. I'd like to know. Well, I think it is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry we disturbed you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you, Joanna, and good luck to you. Thank you. What are you supposed to be now, Eloise? You have to be ready in case. Case of what? Just in case of it. Oh, I think there's very little chance of the enemy attacking this morning, Eloise. Where is that ballot with my sneakers to be cleaned and prepped? No. I really think your friend is very nice. But I'm afraid it's a most impractical romance. He's a movie star and I'm only a chambermaid. Well, I'm afraid...
afraid you'll have to try your matchmaking with two other people. Eloise, your breakfast is here. Oh, Eloise. Eloise, are you ready? Room service is waiting. Front and center. Eloise, I think you find this morning's paper very interesting. There's a very interesting article about your mama and your papa. Oh, won't you join us for a cup of coffee? Oh. Oh, well, you know we should. Yeah, we shouldn't, but we always do. Do sit down while it's hot, hot, hot. Thank you. There we are. Oh. Now, shall we have our morning song? Oh, are you ready, Sir Thomas Beecham? The man from bottom to top is up, the keeper in the shop is up, and even Mrs. Mop is up. Oh, what a lovely morning. The clouds are square, the mob is up, and thick a dilly, the nip is up, the cove and gun, the clip is up. Oh, what a lovely morning. When up, we've got to be jolly clean from head to toe, and in the sweet, not good morning, and how you breathe. Oh, what a lovely morning. The royal noise is up, is up. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now I come back for the table when you're finished. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Pardon me, William, but uh, could you tell me who belongs to this? Yeah, but the turtle, that belongs to Eloise, Mr. Rosenblum. <laughs> Eloise! Now, there's a the gal I want to meet. Yeah, well, if you wish, I return. Well, sure. just tell me where, and I'll bring it to her personal. Well, certainly, sir. She's in 14G. So Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. You. <laughs> Thank you, champion. <laughs> yeah. Let's try this on you for size. Your head is about the size of my brother's neck. That would be 22. Yes, sir. Come in, come in, come in. Hello. I guess you're Eloise. I'm told this belongs to you. I found it in my bed. Thanks a lot. Hey, you're pretty famous around the plaza. Everybody likes you. I want to tell you something. I saw you in the elevator yesterday. I'm a nuisance in the lobby. Mr. Salamone said so. And he ought to know because he's the manager. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, you're slaps the Maxi Rosenblum. I've seen you on television. I'm a prize fight fan, but I prefer wrestling. Oh, why didn't you wrestle, Mr. Rosenblum? It's a funny thing, madam. A lot of people thought I did. Oh, excuse me. Nanny here. Oh, no. Positively not. We're not interested. No, no newspaper people and no photographers. Emmys is not to be photographed. Joanna, oh, go quickly, please. Uh, tell the elevator men not to let anyone up to see Eloise. Go quickly. Uh, give me the manager, please. Uh, never mind. Oh, Mr. Champ, uh, won't you help us, please? They want to photograph Eloise, and if they do, she'll find out her parents are having a most shattering quarrel. It'll break her heart. Oh, Mr. Champ, uh, stop the photographers. It'll be a pleasure, madam. Hello, Louis. Hello, Max. Hello, Kay. I think you ought to stand back. I may have to sklank a photographer. Sklank? I think he's met Eloise. I think so. It's Eloise. They want a photograph. But we can't what? let them do that. Of course not. Will you hold it for me, Mr. Woolley? I'll be right back. You again. No, you can't put in there. Eloise isn't seeing anybody. Now, look, me. lady. We're from the press, and we've got a job to do, so just stand aside. Hey. Oh, Mr. Rosenblum. Let's be sensible, gentlemen. The lady don't want no pictures taken. So why don't you all turn around? We'll all get down to the bar and have a nice morphin. Oh, uh, come to my room. We're having turtle soup. We want to get to the kid. Now, listen, gentlemen. Uh, the little girl doesn't know what's happened. You just can't break her heart. Oh, I may be forced to break your legs. Oh, now look, champ. This case has been front page news all over the country. And there isn't a single picture of Eloise. So we're going to get one. Gentlemen, you're going nowhere, but maybe back. I thoroughly agree with Mr. Rosenblum. I used to be captain of the hockey team, and no pup ever got past me. What a humiliating thing to remember. Oh, we... <laughs> oh, look, there she is! <laughs> Over here! Come on, Ace! Oh. Here, honey, look at the camera! Over here, sweetheart! Look at the party! Ah. Here, honey! Oh. Ah. <laughs> A 
And now a word from our alternate sponsor of this portion of the show. When sniffles and sneezes and other painful cold miseries make your head feel like a balloon, <laughs> Gesundheit, relieve those painful cold miseries fast with Bufferin, because Bufferin acts twice as fast as aspirin to relieve cold miseries, headache pain, neuralgia, or ordinary aches and pains. Here's why. As you see, both Bufferin and aspirin take exactly the same time to get to the stomach. But for a pain reliever to do its best and quickest work, it must get out of the stomach into the bloodstream. Now, Bufferin's formula combines aspirin with two special antacid ingredients, which get the pain reliever out of the stomach into the bloodstream twice as fast as aspirin. That's why Bufferin acts twice as fast as aspirin. What's more, Bufferin doesn't upset your stomach as aspirin often does. So get Bufferin today and banish cold miseries fast. Bufferin. After station identification, we will return to Playhouse 90 and Kay Thompson's Eloise with its brilliant all-star cast. A great program repeated out of darkness Sunday on the CBS Television Network. Playhouse 90 continues. This half hour brought to you by Ronson, makers of the world's greatest lighters and electric shavers for men and women. Morning, Mr. Salamone. Good morning, Eloise. Where have you been? To the palm court. Huh? Thomas and I were having one of our conversations. I think Thomas is a perfectly marvelous Major Dean. I think he ought to get a raise. Because he has a son in the Marines Club married on a shoestring. Well, did you get my corsage and the caviar? Yes, it was absolutely delicious. You having a busy day? I spent about four hours in catering. No, yeah, so I heard. And you were at the wedding last night in the white and gold room. I stayed for the reception. It was rather sad. Well, I'm having my shoes shined around 6.30. Why don't you come down and we can play railroad station, huh? Oh. Oh. Hello. I just saw my friend Bill, who's a busboy in the night and goes to school in the day. Here's where he's been, Madrid. Here's where I sit, the boiler room. It's my favorite place. And where is the boiler room? Well, you simply take the service elevator to the 58th Street side and go past the garage. You know what? No. What? How about you and Joanna this morning? Now, Eloise, I did not take her in my arms. She fell in my arms. There's a difference. It was an accident. I have been in 13 accidents and have heard one siren. Eloise, uh, do you think she could have taken it seriously? Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, I, I've got to talk to her. Uh, where is she now? Je ne sais pas. Uh, do you have a telephone number? I don't, but Mr. Salamone may have. Uh -huh. Good morning, Mr. Jardin. Good morning. Hello, Eloise. Hello, Mr. Fowler Hop. For a house detective, you're pretty smart. How would you recognize me in this disguise? I followed your footprints. And I've got another little clue that may interest you. Your tutor's upstairs waiting for you. Ah, uh, he can wait a second. Take off that hat and come on. Okay, I'll go with you to show me what they're doing in room 317. What they're doing in room 317 has nothing to do with you, Eloise, now. Come along with me. Well, Mr. Jourdain. Oh, hello. Did you get everything straightened out? Uh, yes, we explained everything to the judge, and the editors agreed that we had every right to protect the child's privacy. Oh, good. Made quite a stew in the papers. Yes. I hope that's the end of it. Uh, uh, not quite, Mr. Salamone. No. Uh, there is a young chambermaid by the name of Joanna. Now, has she forgotten to leave you enough towels? Is there something wrong? Uh, no, 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 no. Not at all. Uh, what I really wanted to know is, uh, do you have a telephone number? Oh. Now, it's not entirely customary for us to give out personal telephone numbers, Mr. Jourdain, but, uh, well, since it's you, I think we can make an exception. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't get me wrong, Mr. Salamone, please. No, no it, it's just a little something I've gotten involved in that I've got to get involved out, you see? Yes, I see. Yeah. This, Philip, is a 
program from the pavilion at Blackpool. Sir Harry Lauder was the guest star, and John Philip Sousa played. <laughs> oh, it was a bully show. It was the sweet of Nanny to take me. Nanny, if you had a nanny, how could you become a nanny? Reversals, Philip. Reversals. Papa would buy those tiresome Kimberley shares. You know what the war did to those. Which war, Nanny? The war against the Imperial German Army and Kaiser Bill. My brother captured this at Wipers. Here is a picture of my brother with one of my most favorite gentlemen. I believe that's King George V. Our most gracious king. This is Captain Billings. He's very imposing. Imposing indeed. That's the very word for him. Dear, dear, Captain Billings. Did you love him, Nanny? As Elizabeth Barrett loved Mr. Browning. But, of course, Albert did not quite return my affections, but I have remained true. True, true, true. How very touching, Nanny. Now, Philip, it's time for you to find your own true love. It may be sooner than you think. You are fond of Joanna, aren't you? Nanny, I'm tired of, of you and Eloise lecturing me about Joanna. I hardly know the girl, and she doesn't even know I'm alive. Now, where have you been? Your tutor is waiting for you in your room. And don't let me hear you say again that he wears red garters and is boring, boring, boring. He and Joanna aren't getting any place. He makes me absolutely sick. Well, you have come to an absolute dead end with them, Eloise. Why don't you let me have a go at it? Salt is like a plate of tapioca. Now, that's no way to talk about your adults. You ought to be very nice to Philip. After all, he went to Andover and your mother knows the dean. So let me see you march directly in there and try to listen and learn something. Oh, that's a very good idea, Eloise. Uh, give me the housekeeper, please. Oh, uh, Mrs. Bellwig, I wonder if you could send Joanna up with some soap and towels, please. Well, how is everything in the hotel, Mrs. Bellwig? Anything new? They're still in room 317. <laughs> Eloise. Well, really, you'd hardly know it was a Hilton Hotel. Yeah. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Eloise. Bonjour, Monsieur Philip. Aren't you feeling well, Eloise? You seem so subdued. Now we will continue with our little picture stories in French. Please turn to page 17. Ah. Now, today, Marie's cousin is visiting with her uncle Maurice, and they're in the garden with the umbrella of her grandmother. And as what I told you yesterday, Louis Marie's cousin... What did you say, Eloise? I said, what about Louis, Jumeau, and Joanna? I don't know what you're talking about, Eloise. I don't believe you do either. She fell into his arms. I can't quite believe that, Eloise. He asked me for her telephone number. How, how did she meet him? I introduced him. He lives next door. If I were you, Philip, I wouldn't waste a second. I'd go as fast as my legs could carry me and talk to Joanne. Eloise, I'd like to clarify several points with you. A. I am here to instruct you in accordance with the regulations of the Board of Education. B. My romantic life is of no concern to you or Nanny. Shall we say no more about it? Mr. Jumeau and Joanna may be together at this very second. You better go in. Eloise, I'm being paid to tutor you, and tutor you I shall. Now, as I was saying, Maurice Cousins, Louis <laughs> Jordan, the best. We will begin to translate. Well, Eloise, shall we begin? Well, Eloise, shall we begin? Shall we settle down, Eloise? Shall we settle down, Eloise? That's quite enough, Eloise. That's quite enough, Eloise. I mean it, Eloise. I mean it, uh, Eloise. 
That will do, Eloise. That will do, Eloise. Stop it at once, Eloise. Stop it at once, Eloise. Very well, Eloise. Very well, Eloise. Nanny! Nanny! Hello. Would you please give me room service? Hello, room service. Would you kindly send one engagement ring and one cake made of candy with the, with the names of Philip and Joanna inside a lovely heart with gumdrops and roses and marshmallow blueberries and chocolate forget-me-nots. Thank you very much. And charge it, please. I resign. Oh, no. Now, come, come, Philip. You have to be strong, strong, strong. Oh, come along. Do some calisthenics. It'll get the poisons out of your system. Come along, Philip. Come along. After all, Eloise is a very special child. None of the rules apply. And if I remember correctly, I'm quoting you. Oh, Nanny, sometimes you and Eloise say the most devilishly accurate things. Yesterday, she told me I was lonely and I should go out and do something about it. Today, she brings another element into the situation entirely, and I can't tell whether she's telling me the truth or whether she is or whether she isn't. All Eloise is saying is that you ought to get married. Eloise, Eloise thinks everyone ought to get married. She's the greatest believer in marriage in the whole world. That's why it's such a pity. It is, isn't it? Nanny, do you mind if I didn't go on with Eloise today because I'm jolly well tired? I don't think it'll matter. If Eloise gets her PhD one day later... Oh, come in. Come in, come in. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the housekeeper said you needed these. Oh, thank you, Well, No matter how much soap we have, we never seem to have enough. Is uh, Eloise all right? I was worried. Oh, she's smashing. Couldn't be better. She hadn't the least idea of what went on this morning. She's fine, fine, fine. Now, you two know each other, don't you? Oh, certainly. Yes, we do. Uh, well, if you have enough soap and towels and things, I must leave. So must I. Oh. Uh, perhaps you two could go down in the elevator together and have a chocolate soda. You... Both look as though you could do with a chocolate soda. I'd love one. Well, so would I. But I have to go down in the service elevator. Well, um, perhaps Philip could join you. There, isn't that a good idea? Well, if he doesn't mind. Oh, I don't mind at all. Not really. Re really not at all. Well, then, goodbye. You too. Goodbye. Hello, Mrs. Jules. Well, well, Eloise, is anything else wrong? Well, once there was this man out on this balcony, there was this darling little child who told him where Joanna was. And this movie star ran as fast as Everly, his legs would carry him to the service elevator. Service elevator. Fine. <laughs> There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Hello, Mr. Uh, Jordan. Uh, this is Mr. Philip Sloan, Mr. Louis Jordan. Como tal vous? Uh, uh, Joanna. Excuse me. Excuse me. Joanna. Joanna. There was a slight uh, contretemps this morning, if you recall. I don't want to discuss it in front of other people, but I just didn't want you to think that there was anything... I really didn't, Mr. Jordan. I really didn't. I wish I knew what you two were both talking about. Uh, it's a private matter, Mr. Sloan, involving other people. Uh, I'm sure Joanna will tell you all about it. Joanna's under no obligation to me whatsoever. I mean, well, she doesn't have to tell me anything if she doesn't want to. Well, really, Mr. Sloan, I don't know what Mr. you're getting so angry about. I don't know what you give me your autograph. <laughs> My mother is well, crazy about you. I understand what people want autographs for. I think Please, that's one sir. of the silliest customs of the 20th century. If people want autographs, I don't see what business it is of yours. You're wrong, Mr. Sloan. It's a very nice custom. Thank you. Hello, give me the house detective, please. It's rather important. Here's what I hate, the busy signal. Oh, cancel him. Give me Marty Woolley. Hello? Hello? Oh, not you, Eloise. Oh, well... Well, I must say, that's the most ingenious plot. Oh, what a poisonous mind you have, Eloise. And it's so delicious. <laughs> yes, of course. I'll talk to the house detective. Oh, 
Hold it. There's a problem about a small ruby bracelet that's been stolen. Young man, I'm afraid I'll have to hold you for questioning. Well, how dare you? I never stole anything in my life. Well, now, I'm sure he didn't take anything. No, uh, this is ridiculous. There, there must be some explanation. Mr. Jardin, would you please get this young lady out of here so I can question the gentleman? Well, now, I'm not going anyplace. I'm staying right here with Philip. This is just silly. I'm sorry, young lady. I'm afraid I'll have to insist. Now, come on. Come on. Please, Mr. Jardin, won't you help him? I'm sure he didn't take anything. Of course, of course. Well, you, you just go ahead. I'll do the best I can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eloise. Come out here, Eloise. Well? Well, and what brings you into the boiler room, Monty? Counter espionage. I told the house detective to detain Philip so that you could run off with Johanna. Ah. I take it uh, this is with the collaboration of Eloise. Uh, precisely. And it failed miserably, didn't it? Precisely. Uh, and now, don't you think you'd better go and uh, release that boy? That's my intention. Good. Uh, and in the future, Monty, if you must play game with Eloise, make it hopscotch. Hmm? Good. Now you've made a terrible mistake. Oh, I you didn't. have indeed, my poor misguided friend. I found my fabulous ruby trinket in my hot water bottle. <laughs> you may go, my man. And here's a tip. I just left an old friend in the Vanderbilt suite. You'll find her body in the trunk. <laughs> oh, there's no point in your rushing after her by this time. By this time Joanna is far on her way. Do you know Joanna? I do indeed. She knows me more intimately than anyone since my mother. She comes into my room without knocking, with a mop, but she pokes into the most, almost oh, outrageous places. That may be your side, Mr. Woolley, but to me she's, she's... Joanna, Joanna, I love you, I love you, Joanna. I honestly love you, Joanna, it's true. Honestly, I mean it, Joanna. I honestly mean it, Joanna. I honestly love you, Joanna. Honestly, I do. Take my heart and my head and my life And mix them up in a whirl When you smile, when you smile And then Joanna, I die Joanna, cause I Joanna, Joanna, be honest with me, my Joanna, and honestly tell me, Joanna, that you honestly love me too. When you've finished, Mr. Presley, I'm taking my great aunt Millicent to a physician. She has something wrong with one of her heads. Hello, I'm Bob Warren, and this is the all-new Rotson 66. The shaver that shaves closest of all. And here's Jack Haddock to prove it, live, not on film. First, Jack is going to shave with well-known shaver A. 
Notice the heavy pressure and scrub board action he must use. And now he'll shave the very same area again with well-known shaver B. Now there's that scrub board pressure again, so irritating to your skin. And now let's see what the smooth Rotson 66 does. But first, let's look through that TV camera at this clean piece of paper as Jack turns on Rotson's exclusive power cleaning to prove the Rotson is absolutely clean. Clean as a whistle. Okay, Jack, shave the same area again with the 66. Notice only a light touch is required. No scrubbing, no pressure, no irritation. Now a flick of the switch and the Ronson 66 power cleans itself again. There, there's the stubble the other shavers left behind. Yes, there's proof that the Ronson 66 with Super Trim shaves closest of all. Now, isn't the all-new Ronson the perfect Christmas gift for all the men on your list? See your Ronson dealer tomorrow. And girls, take it from June Graham. The fabulous new Lady Ronson is the perfect mate for the Ronson 66. It's the glamour gift of the year. So keep your legs and underarms satin smooth with the new Lady Ronson in four fashion colors, only $14.95. <laughs> That's one of the most peculiar orders I've ever seen in this hotel. Well, it's plant medallion of beef tenderloin with fresh vegetables maison, uh, two raisins, one bird seed, and a bottle of beer. Oh, for Eloise. Well, of uh, course, ever well. Yes. Oh, uh, Rupert, now, I know that rules are made to be broken, and I try to make every exception in the case of Eloise, but too much is too much. Now, it's come to my attention that you and Joanna have been having breakfast with Eloise and Nanny every morning. So you could hardly call that breakfast. We just have a sip of coffee and then we sing London from bottom to top is up. <laughs> yes, so I've heard. It has uh, four choruses and it's very rousing, sir. I understand it is very rousing. Yes, sir. All of the guests in this wing now know the words. Oh, well, Mr. Solomon, if you'd rather we didn't, we wouldn't. But anyway, she's only a little girl and she's going through a very difficult time now. There are moments when I wish she could go through her difficult time at the Waldorf. Please, that's impossible. Eloise loves the plaza. Yes, yes, I know she does. Well, go on, take her her bird seed and uh, charge it, please, and thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, sir. that match he had with Johnny Baxter in 1954. <laughs> that was a stinker. Mm. Well, I've told you before, that was a Philadelphia decision. Come in, come in, come in. Ah, are you looking at the fights? My television set is tweed with an all over herringbone pattern. Mm. Yeah. I've got 200 clams on Boy Fennick. Oh, you've as good as lost your money, Mr. Woolley. Boy Fennick hasn't a chance. Oh, really, Nanny? What do you know about fights? Among the nannies in Central Park, I'm considered the authority. And Kid Gadlin reminds me of one Robert Prometheus Fitzsimmons. British. Oh, British. British pugilist and heavyweight champion of the world in 1897 when he defeated Mr. J.J. Corbett. And Mr. J.J. Jeffries defeated him the next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ask me, that decision was a bit of a sticky wicket. No, look, look, they're doing it. They're doing it. Oh, no. Oh, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, uh, no, no. Here he comes with his bowler. Oh, he oh, 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 there he comes oh, back. No. There he is. Oh. At least wait until they've counted ten. <laughs> Mr. Bully, they counted ten. Evidence is conclusive. Boy Fennec is extinguished. Oh, that's right. Mr. Woolley, 
sportsmanship. I care nothing for sportsmanship, nanny. My only interest is winning. Uh, shall we have dinner? Oh, what a splendid idea. Come along, Eloise. Oh, I absolutely love TV. Well, very well, then. You shall see it. I absolutely love you, nanny. I love you, Eloise, more than anything else in the world. The tension oh. continues to mother global capitals, the upset following rebellion and police oh. action battles. Those are among tonight's headlines. Today in San Francisco, the matter of the Devereaux court battle excited considerable interest when both Mr. and Mrs. Devereaux made a scene in court, refuting each other's claim to the custody of their daughter, Eloise. The child, Eloise, meantime, is in New York, and, of course, she is unaware of the events concerning her fate. The judge indicated today that he might send for Eloise and have a talk with her. Oh, isn't that funny, Eloise? Another little girl named Eloise and another... Mummy and Daddy named Devereaux. Most extraordinary coincidence. did you find it? Uh, Timothy Murphy, the hackman, said that he found it in Central Park. But where in Central Park? I think he said it was near the lake. There's a place by the lake where we always go. It's sort of a little pond. She's mad, mad, mad for those ducks. Well, she's a happy little girl, and she's got a head on her. So why don't we stop this schmooze about the lakes? Uh, we must organize a scientific search. Is she missing? Yes. She yes. once told me that she always goes to where there's an exit sign because there might, might be a, a mattress in there, and she can lie down and get some rest so that she can carry on. Have you all tried the exit signs? We've tried everything, Mr. Sloan. I wasn't talking to you, Joanna. Well, it seems to me all you've done all day is make idiotic suggestions. Not nearly as idiotic as yours. Uh, the lady is not accustomed to being spoken to that way. How do you know what the lady is accustomed to, Mr. Jourdain? It's simply a question of good manners, young man. I may not have good manners, Mr. Jourdain, but I have a very interesting rabbit punch. If you care to step outside, I'll show it to you. Too sweet. Very good. Oh my. If you both care to step outside, I'll accommodate your boat. So let's behave, huh? I think I'll go upstairs and phone her mother and father. And I'll go ahead. I'll have another talk with Mr. Murphy. I'm going out to the park myself. I'll find her. May I come with you, Mr. Blumenrose? Sure. Kay. Yes, Louis? I have a crazy idea about Eloise. Well, no idea about Eloise can be entirely crazy. Uh, this morning, she told me that the boiler room was her favorite place in the whole world. But surely they've looked in the boiler room. The boiler rooms are full of little nooks and crannies. A little girl like Eloise could be there and they wouldn't even see her. She, she could hide in a crack. Oh, of course she could. Come on, let's go. Yes. Listen to me. 
You must be a big girl and understand that your mother and father both love you. You're still the most important thing in their lives and they've just been trying not to hurt you. Eloise, you must not think they've stopped loving you. If you think about it and are as bright as I know you are, You'll understand. Oh, Eloise, don't you trust, trust, trust me. Aren't I your good, good, good friend? Didn't I let you conduct the orchestra one night? And didn't I let you wear my false eyelashes to the debutante ball you weren't invited to? And didn't I let you steal my diamond ring and wear it in your head like a Miley's hat? But darling, everything's gonna be all right. We'll go upstairs and put on my sables and have fun. It's gonna be all right. Everything's not gonna be all right. I wanna see my lawyer. <laughs> This is a picture of a Christmas gift looking for a girl. For a girl? But that's a man's lighter. That's a ransom ethics. Exactly. It's looking for a girl to buy it for her special man because it knows that a pocket lighter is the most personal gift she can give him. Uh-oh, some girl's interested. She's admiring the styling. She's a practical-minded one. She just wants to make sure it works. A Ronson always works, thanks to its exclusive Pozzolite action. Most dependable lighter in the world. Look at that, she's broken it. Don't be silly, she's gonna fill it. Without a screwdriver? Absolutely, that's Ronson's new patented swivel base. To fill a Ronson lighter, you just swing open, fill with the best lighter fuel in the world. Ronson all, of course. Match, then click close. Wonder if she'll buy it. Uh, those other Ronsons have caught her eye. Uh, maybe she'll buy several. How could she resist? Look at all those exciting finishes. There's the richness of deep engraved metal, the cool beauty of enamel, the glamour of gold, the smartness of leather and so many beautiful styles to choose from. A perfect gift for every gallon guy on every Christmas list. And everyone as precision engineered as a fine watch. Oh, thank goodness she's decided on the Ronson Essex for him. It'll go where he goes, do what he does, to remind him of her always. Lucky guy. Because she's so pretty? No, because he's getting a Ronson. I wouldn't dream of taking a tip. But how is Eloise? Well, her appetite is coming back. She ordered two papayas for luncheon. Unfortunately, the hotel didn't have them. We'll try Pavillon and the 6th Avenue Delicatessen. Oh, thank you very much. What is this? Something Eloise has always wanted. Me and the boys give it to her with all our love. Oh, thank you very much. We... Another gift from the Bell Boys. Very peculiar. What is it, a sewer pipe? Well, it's very likely a prayer rug. Now, what could Eloise possibly want a prayer rug for? She could wear it. <laughs> Isn't it enchanting? Well, I must say I'm very grateful to whatever cat has your tongue. Makes it awfully peaceful around here. All the elevator boys and the doorman and the sanitary engineers and the housekeeper and the maintenance staff all send their love. And, uh, and Mr. Woolley and Miss Thompson, Philip and Joanna, Mr. Rosenblum and Mr. Louis Jordan are waiting outside. I want to see my lawyer. Well, Mr. Price will be here directly. And, and if I know him, he stopped off at that lovely gumdrop stall on 54th and Lexington. 
I do hope he brings us some lovely sweets, all mocha and banana with filberts, don't you, Eloise? Eloise, I know you very well. You're simply acting this out. This is scene 37. We've done it very often before. We all know how it ends. You have no fever. You have roses in your cheeks, so you just go right on sulking. And I'll go on bringing in these lovely presents. I want to see Joanna. So you shall, and we... Well, they can perfectly well stay with the mother. Otherwise, they can go to Connecticut. Well, I, I think I'd better get Nanny in here. I think she has a fever, Nanny. I don't understand one word of what she's saying. What did she say? Well, there seems to be a judge up there. And he keeps picking up a hammer and crying, Savarabri. Oh, Savarabri, of course. That means so be it. But then she says if a child wants to stay with her mother, she can. Otherwise, she can go to Connecticut. Well, that's perfectly sensible. Connecticut's the place to go. And who's going to Connecticut? Haven't you heard? A. Louise is giving you a course at Yale. <sighs> what a way to raise a child. Nanny, did you talk to her parents again? To them both at some length. They're both quite upset. But each of them has a different idea of how to raise a child. Oh, Nanny, will you please stop slip, uh, whimpering? I, I can't hear a word you say, and I could be more delighted. Well, the best idea they could have would be to stop jabbing at each other and call it a draw. What are we going to do? She's just not the same little girl she used to be. You're not the same either, darling. Oh. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Miss Barrymore. I think you know everyone here. Mr. Uh, Mr. Woolley, Miss Thompson, Mr. Rosenblum, Mr. Philip Sloan, and Joanna, and Mr. Louis Jordan. I'm delighted to see you, Miss Barrymore. I'm your devoted fan. Oh, thank you. I'd like your autograph, too. I may be ill. What's the matter, Monty? You've never been the same since you came to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? You all look so serious. Well, we were, we were talking about how to raise a child. Yes. Oh, and there seems to be some difference of opinion. Oh, yes. Oh, wait a minute and stop the fuss. Let's sit down and let's discuss the most controversial subject of the day. Hooray! We're rather in a dreadful fix with a child who's only six. Perhaps we can find the way to solve whatever, whatever. Since there seem to be more than two ways about it, the chances are that we can settle... Well, Monty will ever, will Nanny will tell Joanna and Louie. What do you say? There rather seems to be one issue involved and an infinite number of ways to solve it. Don't you agree? Of course, of course, of course, of course. Of course, of course. 
Identification, we will return to Kate Thompson's Eloise, adapted by Leonard Spiegelgas. Jackie Gleason's here with a live one hour show Saturday night on the CBS Television Network. We now return to Eloise. I wouldn't leave it all to you. I have to see Eloise about my financial arrangements. Oh, don't tell me that Eloise is an expert on the stock market. Oh, not the market, exactly. You see, well, it's racing. Yes, I used to have mental bets, you know. I shut my eyes tight and just stuck a pin in it. But now, look, Eloise has been doing it for me lately, and I've made millions. I must see her before post time at Pimlico. Oh, oh Mr. Ruggles. Oh, I think I have something Eloise might like. Ditty Moore has put it up specially for me on my way home. Pig's Knuckles. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, Pig's Knuckles is not only good for the soul, it's good for the body, too, you know. Thank you, Mr. Ruggles. Won't you come in and uh, sit down uh, and I'll you. just take Thank these pigs and I'll... Oh, my, 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 your face smell good. Frankly, no. Hello, Eloise. I did exactly what you told me to do. I called up San Francisco and said I was a nurse, just as you instructed me to. I said you were coming down with something frightful. I think I terrified them. <laughs> now, here. And the fifth, you know, I had a hunch about that. May I use your telephone? Hello, operator? Oh, hello, Gertie. This is Miss Barrymore. Will you give me Benny's candy store on Third Avenue? Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. We had to come up personally to see what was the matter. Eloise didn't call room service since more than three hours already. And there are that many guests with parrots. But Eloise, so she can taste a slight difference in the Bernie sauce. And only Eloise can appreciate the vigorous delicacy of my rigatoni. I announce for all the world to hear that without Eloise's order, the kitchen is not the same. I noticed that this morning at breakfast. Mr. Price, good morning. Good morning, Nanny. Uh, this is, um, this is Mr. Price. Eloise's attorney. How do you do? Oh, hello. Didn't know Eloise had a lawyer. Eloise has a solicitor. Uh, I don't see why you should be surprised. Most certainly I'm not. Of course she has. Eloise has considerable oil interest left to her by her maternal grandfather. At the moment, she's involved in a big deal with the Navy. Uh, can we look forward to a battleship in the lobby? <laughs> Mr. Price, I've been longing to talk to someone with a really legal mind. There's a contract that I've... Miss Thompson, about. why don't you come and see me at my office? But I that... may be ill again. Here's a good, strong cup of tea for you, Mr. Price. Tea? What we all need is a good glass of vino chianti. Thank you, Nanny. It always helps to have something stimulating when you talk to Eloise. On the contrary, I'd, I'd suggest an anesthetic.
Eloise? Eloise? Take your time, darling. Don't hurry. I'm delighted to be able to see you again. Because I planned the most wonderful adventures for us, Eloise. I hope you're free on Wednesday. Because I want to take you to the Guaranteed Trust. To clip some coupons. <laughs> and perhaps you'd like to look in on the stock exchange. Oh, well, by the way, we made a little money today. <laughs> Amalgamated is splitting three for one. I'm afraid you're going to have to see your income tax man after all. Oh. All right. I can see you want to get right down to business. Now, I've followed your instructions to the letter. I called the president of American Airlines, and your mother and father are on the same plane. So that much is settled. Now, the thing of it is that I sent my car to meet them. I know your mother will want to use it because she loves the role. And your father will, of course, to save the taxi fare. So far, so good. Now, I have some papers I want you to sign. Is there? Thank you. Now, I'm going to leave it up to you, Eloise, to figure out some way to get your mother and father alone together. I'm sure you can manage that. You always have before. Goodbye, Eloise. I'll call for you on Wednesday. Grab Mr. Devereaux, of course. and the other grab Mrs. Devereaux. Of course, of course, of course. Of course. That's a jolly good idea. Louis, you take this side, and I'll take this side. Fine. I want to go on this side. I'm very sorry, Mr. Jordan, but I do love Philip. I never doubted it for a moment. Of course. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Right. 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 Oh. oh, Mr. Hilton, how do you Mr. Hilton. Hilton. There is bedlam in the lobby. There must be a hundred bellboys forming a wedge so that nobody can turn in any direction. I believe Mr. Salomone thinks that... Mr. Hilton, that means one of the elevators is stuck. Oh, oh, oh my poor hotel is falling to pieces. Please, 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 everybody, stand back. This elevator is stuck between the fifth and sixth floor. We have to get the door open to see what the trouble is. Eloise's mother and father are in. It's Mr. and Mrs. Devereaux that we've got them where we want them. Let's go. to reveal to everybody. And don't underestimate me. I am a gossip, but if I was not. Yes, and David Runyon would have loved her once he got over the shock. And I fear I shall tell you, Mr. and Mrs. Devereaux, that the entire staff of this hotel is devoted to Eloise. And if you don't make up, I warn you, beware of room service. Listen, you two dopes. 
The Brooklyn Dodgers would like to have her on their side. I freely predict that Eloise will either be President of the United States or go to the guillotine. The choice is squarely up to you. here at the plaza, brought about by you, Eloise, and by some remarkable coincidence, I've written a song entitled Eloise. We'd like to sing it for you. Eloise, 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 who is the little girl who lives at the plaza in New York? That's me, Eloise. I am six. I live in the top floor with my nanny. Who the little girl who knows everybody's business in New York. I spent a little nervous amount of time in the lobby. I have to see what's going on there. Who's on the telephone most of the day? I simply have to call room service and tell them to charge you, please, to thank the lot until we play. Who's in and out and up and down and in everybody's way? I have a nuisance in the lobby. Mr. Salomon, he said so. He ought to know. He's an animal. Who's up at break of day creating a terrible racket in the hall? Sometimes I take two sticks and skitter them along the wood Who has a lovely way of writing her name in lipstick on the wall? My mother is 30 and wears a three and a half shoes. Who's the little darling who'll drive you out of your head but you love her just the same? After all, I'm only six. Who's the little girl who's only good when she's in bed? Eloise. What is it? Is her name? Eloise. 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 What are you doing, doing, doing? It's such a lovely party. A toaster, toaster, toast. We're jolly glad we came. Actually, I am rather tired. Next week, Playhouse 90 presents a film made especially for this series. The story is Confession by Devery Freeman, the author of a number of fine screenplays. I am happy to be appearing in this tense and exciting production. And starring with me is Dennis O'Keefe, who joins me now in telling you about Confession. As you can see, there are people who'd rather I wouldn't dig too far into his life. When I find what I'm looking for, it almost cost me my life. And my girl. Don't stop here. Go out to his grave like the ghoul you are. I'm sure you'll dig up an angle there. Confession is the dramatic story of a man whose passion for the truth brings his sense of duty into conflict with his emotions. He lived a lie during the last year of his life. Obviously, he refused to have his memory lied to. No. No! Face it, Amy. Your father wanted you to know the truth.
Playhouse 90, next week, Confession, starring Dennis O'Keefe, June Lockhart, Paul Stewart, and Romney Brent. to you tonight by Ronson, makers of the world's greatest pocket and table lighters and electric shavers for men and women. And Ronson, a lighter fuel in the switch spout can for easy filling. And by Singer, designer and maker of the world's most advanced sewing machines. Singer, known the world over by these friendly signs, the famous Singer and Red S trademarks. Two weeks from tonight, Playhouse 90 will present live from Hollywood again, Made in Heaven. Starring Imogene Coca, Robert Preston, Phyllis Kirk, Eddie Mayhoff, Sheila Bond, Anne Benuta, and Jacques Bergerac as Jean Marat. Tonight, the sponsors of Playhouse 90 are happy to congratulate the 4-H Clubs of America, 1,200 club delegates convening this week in Chicago for the 35th National 4-H Club Congress. Dick Joy speaking, portions of the preceding program pre-recorded. Playhouse, the CBS Television Network production.